countries around the world are competing for resources, and prime among those resources is human capital. When talent consistently leaves the country of birth for opportunities abroad, it creates a persistent drag on the home country's economy and blights its growth, a phenomenon recognized as brain drain. While brain drain affects the developed world, England, for example, sees over 1.1 million university graduates living and working outside of the country. The pain is most keenly felt in developing countries. A high proportion of high-skilled emigrants do not return to the home country. Overall, up to one-fifth of students who study abroad do not come back, at least not immediately, and there is evidence that those who go for their master's and PhD are least likely to return. An estimated 70% of Chinese students who study overseas never return to their homeland, and around half of African inventors live outside their home country. Due to brain drain, talent becomes scarce, more expensive, and hard to retain, and companies begin chasing few qualified individuals, triggering the cost of talent to become exorbitantly high. One temptation in handling the immigration of those educated out of the country might be to pull back on education initiatives, which could have negative side effects. Migration has been one of the major contributors to the development of the most talent-ready countries such as Singapore, Switzerland, and Canada. Also, the possibility of earning higher income encourages people to take education more seriously and to aspire for higher education. Furthermore, immigration of those who enter the talent pool has been found to stimulate the development of human capital. And if they do return home, they bring back useful skills and professional networks back with them. So instead of pulling back, success stories in dealing with brain drain are more attributed to factors beyond the realm of migration policy, such as strong economic growth and relative political stability. Taiwan managed to lure back immigrants from Silicon Valley and build a thriving electronics and technology industry through other tactics. First, actively networking with the Taiwanese diaspora to promote their return. Second, subsidizing vocational rather than advanced education so that returnees would find a ready labor force, who in turn would benefit from their initiatives. And third, the creation of science parks that replicated the Silicon Valley environment and lifestyle that the returnees were used to. The best policies for encouraging brain circulation and investment from the diaspora is creating business-friendly policies that encourage entrepreneurship. Quality of life also plays a great role in the decision of immigrants returning. Modern housing, good school options for families, and effective healthcare systems all register as priorities for potential returnees. Additionally, returning immigrants would want to view their return as a personal opportunity rather than an obligation to their home country. Therefore, the more personal and professional growth opportunities they see in their homeland, and the more open their home country is to the international community, the more the returnees believe they can remain part of the larger world and still stay in their home country.